Hi friends, you like the haircut? I think it looks pretty good. You know what else is good? Spy X Family Code White! <laughs> Woo! Oh, that was such a good movie. If you can't tell, I love that show. This is my third favorite anime series. Uh, stay tuned for when I reveal the other two favorites that I like slightly more. And that's saying something, because Spy X Family is a show that I rate solidly 9.8 out of 10 pretty much the whole way through. There's only one anime that I will give a 10 out of 10 to, and the other one I give a, like, oddly enough, I'd give it a 9.5, but I like it more. Don't question me. Anyways, this movie was amazing. Right off the bat, I'm going to rank it a 90%, 9 out of 10. And I'll get to that in a second. But a little bit of backstory on what this anime has meant to me, my history with it. I watched it pretty much right as soon as it came out. I watched it pretty close after it came out in April of 2022, I believe. So it would have been sometime that year. So I think I probably, yeah, I would have been going through my original anime phase in early 2022 pretty much because i started with attack on titan and might have been demon slayer attack on titan and demon slayer i think those were the two anime that i started with oh wait cowboy bebop might have been my first anime that's another 9.5 out of 10 right there seriously good makes me cry anyways Spy X Family, I picked up pretty early because I've been a fan of shows that mix slice of life and action together really well. And Spy X Family fills that appetite pretty flawlessly. I love pretty much everything about it. If you're not familiar with Spy X Family, let me give you a little rundown. We have the spy, Twilight, who goes under the name of Lloyd Forger in this mission that he's on. He is infiltrating the enemy country of Estonia to get in contact with someone high in power, and his cover is a family man. So he needs to come across a wife and kid within 24 hours. So the show starts with him adopting a little kid, and then through her mind powers, uh, speaking of which, Anya has mind reading powers, they absolutely carry the show. I absolutely love it. You'd think something like that would be a little goofy. It is goofy in all the best and most charming ways. I love it to death. It makes plot conveniences make sense. It gives them a reason to exist, and thus it carries the show really well. And then there's Yor, the assassin mom, who is literally superhuman and goes nuts. It's insane. And then there's Bond, the little dog. I love I love Bond. He's cute. He's just like my dog. Schmibberg. 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 Carrying on. I'm not going to talk about the show too much here. Go watch it if you want to. But yeah, point is, really wholesome show. Really cute. Really sweet. Just absolutely wonderful mix of found family wholesomeness and spy and assassin insane action. Anyways, on to the movie. The movie starts out where Anya has an assignment at her school, where Anya needs to make the best dessert possible to get her a Stella star so they can progress further along with Operation Strix. She needs some certain ingredients for this, so Lloyd suggests that they go on a trip to a nearby town that might have everything they need. The family goes to the town, they look for the ingredients, they find most of them, hijinks ensue, just family wholesomeness, it's absolutely adorable. The movie was so sweet, so fun, like, early half, not really too much of plot substance, it was mostly filler, but that's okay. Honestly, that's where this show shines, and I'm not going to spoil any of it, because I want you to see it, because anime movies like this, unfortunately don't usually do very well in the U.S. So if you can find a showing, and if you like anime, if you like Spy X Family, please go watch it. It's very sweet, very wholesome. Then we get to, like, the final one-third of the movie. 
And this is where there's like two or three things that are my only complaints about the movie. And it's only because I am an absolute fiend for factual depictions of World War II style aircraft. <laughs> so it's not even a show. It's not even a problem of the show itself. The show, the movie itself was fine. If you're not overly critical of airplane physics like I am, you're not going to have an issue with it. I didn't have an issue with it. It looked amazing. She, it looks awesome. It was awesome, 100%. Animated flawlessly. It was very engaging, 100%. But it kind of took me out of it because the aircraft that... And I won't give too much context because I don't want to spoil things. But the aircraft that Lloyd was piloting was a basically a mix between a de Havilland Mosquito and a Bristol Blenheim. On one hand, the Mosquito was a freaking phenomenal twin-engine fighter aircraft that set multiple speed records. The Bristol Blenheim, on the other hand, was exceedingly slow, a honestly travesty of a bomber, and not a fighter aircraft. Actually, I'm just going to look this up and just read it right here. Wikipedia time. The Bristol Blenheim is a British light bomber designed and built by the Bristol Aeroplane Company. The Bristol Blenheim saw extensive use during the first two years of the Second World War as a light bomber. The Blenheim was later adapted into a heavy fighter with the addition of a gun pack with four Browning 303 machine guns and was also used as a maritime patrol aircraft they were both used as bombing and gunnery trainers once they became obsolete as combat aircraft. It did not see very much service as a fighter aircraft because it was slow and not maneuverable. It was a light bomber and even kind of failed as that despite its extensive use, but that was just because they didn't have anything better yet. It did have some pros. The Blenheim was one of the first British aircraft with an all-metal stressed skin construction, retractable landing gear, flaps, a powered gun turret, and variable pitch propellers. It was faster than the biplanes in the late 30s, but advances soon left it vulnerable if flown in daylight, though it did have success as a night fighter, but it was, yeah, it, it lots were shot down. Lots. I'll just do the, the mosquito reading here as well. The de Havilland Mosquito, a British twin-engine multi-role combat aircraft introduced during the Second World War. Unusual in that its airframe was constructed mostly of wood. It was given the name of Wooden Wonder. Uh, I will spare you of my nerd session about the absolute gorgeous beast that was the Mosquito. Because I'm looking at this picture, and yeah, it's... It, uh, uh, Lloyd, unfortunately, was not flying a mosquito. If he was flying a mosquito, I would have believed the scene a heck of a lot more. But yeah, no, it was a lot closer to a Blenheim. That being said, I want to talk about the mosquito more. Maybe I'll talk about that later. Stay tuned. Uh, it was a exceedingly fast plane, though. What was its speed? 415 miles an hour. I said I wasn't going to get into too much detail or spoilers. Screw it. The gloves are off. Lloyd was on approach to the enemy platform. I won't say exactly what. I can spare you that detail. The plane was on a landing approach, and this is when a pilot will decrease the power to the engines. This plane had two engines. Both of the wheels were out. The flaps were down. He was on landing approach. The enemy started firing at him, and he immediately just goes like, Burr! and I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. It takes a long time for those engines to get up to speed, especially on a plane, 
equivalent to a Bristol Blenheim. You can't go straight up in a plane that is anything less than literally an F-15 Strike Eagle. I apologize. I like airplanes. I like airplanes. And so thus, uh, that took me out of this movie a little bit. Because they shot a guided missile in an era that is portrayed as being 1950s-ish time. This movie, Spy X Family, is supposed to take place someplace between 1940 and 1950, essentially. Obviously, this is an alternate world setting, but that's the timeline, pretty much, equivalent to our world. Guided missiles didn't exist. Literally everything else, technology-wise, existed at this point, except for guided missiles. Those didn't exist. Also, guided missiles don't follow prop planes because there's no jet stream. They had unguided rockets, and that's pretty much the best they had up until I'm gonna take a wild guess, probably between the 50s and 60s. Anyways, apologies for the rant. Besides the silly little airplane rant, uh, yeah, the rest of it, absolutely lovely. The action was wonderful, comedy was hilarious, especially because, not gonna tell you why, but Anya needs to go to the bathroom, and she can't go to the bathroom for plot reasons. Watch the movie, I promise you, you will get a kick out of this, because Anya tried to hold in her poop so long that she saw Poop God and had a wonderful <laughs> magical vision and an absolute trip. Oh my goodness, I laughed my pants off, basically. Uh, my goodness, I laughed my butt off. In all the best ways, I loved it. It was very wholesome, besides that. B because you can't go 0 to 90 degrees and decelerate in a Bristol Blenheim! I'm sorry. 90%. Besides the airplane stuff. I'm gonna carry on. 100% love the movie. I love Spy X Family. I'll talk about this more later, but this is just a quick initial movie review. Just got out of the theater, Lost Bry telling you what he thought of the movie. Um, yeah, the whole Lloyd and Yor are getting closer as a couple. I need to see those two actually be in love with each other and not convince themselves that this is just a marriage of convenience because it is a marriage of love and they need to admit this to themselves. Um, Anya, do your thing. Make them realize that. Come on. This is all anger of, I can't wait for this show to continue because there's gonna be a lot more. A lot more. Spy X Family, I love so much that this is one of only two animes that I have seen that I have bought any piece of the manga for. I have, I believe, three volumes, if three or four volumes of the manga, which I haven't read, I just have for collection's sake, because I'm not going to spoil the anime, but I just want to have them, because I want to read them once the whole show comes out. Watch it. Support it. The animators deserve all the love they can get, because animation, 10 out of 10. Story, writing, plot points, 9.9 .9 out of 10, seriously. Like, it's just some of the cultural differences that are just slightly weird sometimes. Doesn't take me out of it, though. That's fine. That I love. It's just some of the physics that are there just for the sake of, let's just make a fun-looking action scene and not catering or not realizing someone who studies World War II history and aircraft physics as a hobby. I'm going to go before I keep rambling. Love you all. Thank you so much. Everything's been going great online. If you're here because you found me on Twitch, hi, I appreciate you guys so much. I've been loving the community that I've been growing to be a part of. So yeah, find me over on Twitch. I stream almost every day. I've been doing it in the mornings, mostly. I stream almost every day. 
twitch.tv forward slash lostbry. I can't wait to see you there. We've got some games that we're going to play. Spoiler alert, Undertale and The Stanley Parable. Those are on the docket soon, if I haven't already played them. I have a VODs channel, and the VODs for those will be up if I've already played them by this point. I also have a Discord link in the description for both those things, as well as everything else that I'm a part of. Yeah, can't wait to see you around. Thanks for being here. Watch Spy X Family. If you like anime, and you like Slice of Life, and you like... Speaking of action, there goes a loud race car. That's cool. Bye, friends. See you in the next one.